Okay. Now that we're recording, we'll go ahead and get started with the opening statements. So each candidate, again, will have up to two minutes to give a brief statement. Uh, in this, you are welcome to discuss how you got started with the GOSH community and reiterate key points uh, from your candidate statements. Uh, I will notify you when you're 10 seconds away from the two minute mark. And I will also tell each candidate when it's your turn to go in order of how you appear on my screen. So that is how the order is done today. Uh, nothing more than that. Cool. Uh, with that, I'd like to get started with Yorgo. You are first on my screen. Great, thank you. Um, so yeah, hi everyone, I'm very happy to, to be here today. I'll try to uh, to keep it in time and give you my statement. So my name is Yorgo. I'm a biologist and software developer by training. I'm originally from Lebanon, but currently based in France. Uh, I'm working as a program coordinator at uh, iGEM, which is the International Genetically Engineered Machine Foundation. Um, and I mainly focus on the community program, but we have a variety of programs to support and lead the way for the synthetic biology field. And through that, we aim to develop uh, the field, education, competition, and we want to develop an open and collaborative uh, community around this. I also spend a lot of time around biosafety and biosecurity. Uh, I first heard about GOSH last year when we got a micro grant for a workshop we did in Latin America. I wasn't directly involved, but that's when I started to look into more stuff related to, to GOSH. And then I started to participate uh, in community calls through Africa OSH. And then that's when I started to initiate collaborations between iGEM and Africa OSH to connect both of uh, communities to see how we can operate together to facilitate collaboration and enable, enable more open science initiatives. Um, so I'm running for the for the council today to because I'm really uh, passionate about the advancement of open science, but more importantly, the responsible advancement and development of open science, particularly at the intersection of biology and uh, chemistry, while remaining uh, vigilant around the the risks that this involves. One of my uh, priorities is to really. Um, pave the way for productive dialogues regarding open science and have valuable gosh input through uh, uh, influential international uh, gatherings such as the Biological Weapons Convention or things related. Uh, and lastly, I really want to, to, to explore how we can establish more collaborations through gosh with iGEM and more uh, international communities that are aligned on the same thinking when it comes to open science and accessibility. Uh, 10 seconds, okay. Uh, yes, so I do a lot of work with different organizations, youth, Red Cross, so I really want to bring in different perspectives into uh, what GOSH does. Thank you. Thank you, Yorgo. Thank you. Awesome. I will continue now with the next person on my screen, who is Lara. Hi. Thank you, Bri. Well, I'm going to make my same, my... I talk in Spanish and English because I'm from Argentina, from Buenos Aires. Uh, so I will speak for you and for the people from Latin America also. Um, I'm environmental engineering. I actually am making a, I'm a PhD candidate in environmental science. And I'm part of a group uh, that is called Cosensores. And we work in the development and the apply of uh, open uh, tools, technologic and methodologic tools. Um, for the uh, environmental monitoring. Uh, in particular, we work with um, social territorials, uh, com communities, um, and we always see the tools um, as, like, we always see the tools as a way of um, respond and, and make a solution for the needs of those communities that are expressed in the territory. So the way I see the tools is always with a view of the application of those tools. I mean, it, it's, it, you can understand what I have said right well, well. So the was community for me, it has been a, a place to understand the importance of the documentation of the tools, because when you want to the tool to be open, you have to documentate and, and, and be very clear about how it works, how you can construct. So for me, it has been very important to be part of the community. And I think um, 
that is a good place for for show people why it's important to use open science hardware and on not only technology tools but also methodology tools. Um, bueno, ahora voy a hablar español. Mi nombre es Lara Jatar, soy ingeniera ambiental. Eh, estoy estudiando el doctorado de ciencias ambientales y soy parte del grupo Cosensores hace cinco años, con el cual venimos eh, desarrollando y aplicando herramientas libres para el monitoreo ambiental y participativo junto con organizaciones socioterritoriales. En particular, para mí las herramientas representan oportunidades para poder... Eh, laburar en conjunto con estas comunidades en territorio que expresan alguna necesidad en particular y de esta forma generar nuevos conocimientos eh, que ayudan, digamos, eh, a la produc producción de una ciencia distinta a la cual se suele promover. Eh, well, I don't know how is the time. I don't see if there is any 10 seconds. But well, that's my... Awesome. Thank you, Lara. Um, yes, I wasn't sure if you needed an additional two minutes just to say the same thing again in Spanish. So I was a little oh. bit just to make sure that it was it was clear there. Okay. But you were you were still within the two minutes, so no worries anyways. Um, cool. Uh, let's see, who do I have next on my screen? I have Saad. Thanks, Bree. Um, I'm Saad. I'm based in Singapore. Um, I have a background in tech. I always find it difficult to describe uh, where I come from, what sort of uh, hat that I wear. I wear a lot of hats. Um, but one thing that hasn't changed is that I'm a geek and I always will be one. Um, and that is my background. I've been in tech for many, 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 many years. I was thinking about um, how far back that goes and it's before Netscape Navigator. So that pretty much dates me. Um, I've constantly been uh, fascinated by how technology uh, brings people together. And um, now more than before, with all of these buzzwords flying around, people get excited about the potential of technology. Um, but very also too often, we tend to overlook the people behind it. Um, so to me, um, The examples that I see uh, with my interactions with GOSH members and the events that GOSH has organized over the years that I've had the opportunity to participate in, um, I've always found them as a source of inspiration. Um, not just the projects that people work on and the passion in which, uh, with which they pursue them and share them, uh, but also the people behind them. They tend to um, uh, keep coming back uh, and showing up in different networks that I'm part of. Um, and so what I would like to explore is more opportunities and projects uh, where this kind of uh, coming together of people and technology can happen. Um, I, I see that as, as the magic that happens when passionate people come together and are willing to share with, with each other. Um, so I'm basically looking for more magic and looking for more opportunities to create uh, for let to let that magic happen. Um, Uh, for uh, to try and sort of like bring in different networks uh, uh, part of the global innovation gathering which uh, tends to plug gosh and me into uh, very different networks and I see people uh, that intersect art and science a lot and I'd love to explore that more as part of the community council thank you Saad all right next up I have Ibuka Imbuka, are you able to hear me okay? I see that you're here, but... Yeah, yeah, I can hear you. I can hear you. Great. Uh, you can start whenever you'd can like. Can you hear me? Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. Um, hi, everyone. It's nice to be here again. And it's nice to meet all of you again. My name is Ibuka Izike, and I'm joining in all the way from Nigeria. I'm a physicist, but now I currently work as a community manager for Africa Archive. And Africa Archive is a, a community-led digital archive, which helps to promote research work from and about Africa. <clears throat> so aside being a, a community manager for Africa Archive, I also 
work as a podcast editor for various um, organizations, two or three organizations. So um, it was during this course of having Frank, Frank of Africa Osh, as a guest of one of our episodes that I got to know about Gosh and Africa Osh. So, um, and it's been amazing ever since then because um, I've come to, you know, take part in a lot of things going on in the Gosh community. So <clears throat> I have um, participated um, regularly in the Gosh monthly community calls, and I have made also several other contributions, like um, being a member of the team that helped in writing um, or still writing the Gosh Gosh Constitution, and also I was one of the awardees for the recent um, micro grants that were given out. So um, it's really been amazing so far learning about um, open science hardware so far. And um, since I joined, I think early this year, I have learned a lot and I am hoping to use all of the ideas that I've learned so far in um, helping to you know, promote open science hardware and open science hardware tools in this part of the world, especially in Nigeria. So this is what I have for now. Thank you very much. Awesome. Thank you, Ibuka. I'm just checking the list of participants to make sure that I got all the candidates and I think we're good. Uh, so yeah, thank you to all our candidates for giving your opening statements. Always appreciated. Uh, now we're going to move into the next section of the meeting, which is the question and answer section. Uh, so now this is when community members can ask candidates questions. Um, you, uh, if you're a community member joining, you are welcome to either ask a question to a certain individual candidate, or you can pose a question to the entire group. Um, so if you'd like to ask a question, please do so in one of three ways. Just raise your hand like this on the camera and I will see you. Um, also feel free to use the raise your hand feature on Zoom, which is I think somewhere under reactions that I can't find right now. Um, or you can just enter your question into the chat and I will see it there and read it out loud. Uh, so for each question, every candidate can respond, uh, and I will prompt those who wish to comment. Uh, each candidate will also have up to one minute to answer a specific question, uh, and I will remind you as well uh, if you're getting close to time. Uh, so yeah, I would like to open it up to community members now. Any questions that you can think of, Penn? Thank you, Bri, and thank you so much uh, to all of the candidates for coming today. It was really exciting hearing about, you know, what you would like to do. Uh, I, I just have a general question uh, for everyone, which is, uh, I'm curious, if, I'm really curious what you see are uh, just one or some of the challenges that you see we as gosh, you know, face as a whole on the community level? And how do you think we can uh, work together to not only overcome those challenges, but uh, to turn them into opportunities? Over. Thank you, Penn. If candidates would like to answer that question, please feel free to raise your hand and I will call on you. Dad, are you trying to talk? Yeah. Um, it's a very good question. And it's something that I was thinking about um, while sort of thinking about my candidate statement as well. Because one of the prompts is that, um, uh, how, how do we look at uh, the uh, the pillars of that, the, uh, the fundamental the things that GOSH stands for and is trying to propagate. And community is the core. Um, uh, I think the challenge to answer uh, the question is engagement. Um, the nature of engagement that um, um, communities are uh, involved in changes according to where uh, and how uh, people come together. And 
with the diverse and spread out uh, group that Gosh uh, is composed of, I think uh, that it brings in some very interesting challenges, and it's uh, all um, it, it's again been a source of inspiration to see how uh, people like Bree and everybody else who's been on the council before uh, have you know brought in ideas, and those ideas have translated to actions on the ground. So um, I would say the challenge that I see in other um, uh, groups, community groups as well, is um, engagement. And now that we've come out of COVID, uh, the way people bring themselves to these engagements is also different. Uh, the hybridization of interactions is something that needs to be developed some more and explored. I think there's potential there. Thank you, Saad. Any other candidates like to respond to Penn's question? Yorgo. Thanks. Uh, yeah, so one of the things that I can think of is really, um, I. so that's one of the things that I mentioned in the statement is how can GOSH um, build like strong relations with other international organizations that align on the same on the same thinking, uh, because at the end of the day, like we're all on the same team, and like we we want to figure out like ways to to spread open science and uh, make it accessible to like the most amount of people through different ways, education, training. So I think if we look at it from an international cooperation perspective, uh, that's one of the ways where Gosh can be investing. I'm not much aware of how gosh is approaching this but it could be one of the ways where uh as an organization uh we could be looking towards that way um to demonstrate the impact of what uh, we're doing on a regional level on a global level uh, etc yeah. thank you yorgo lara oh sorry that was my timer ah <laughs> thanks um, yes, I start to think that like, what is the main challenge? And the, the thing that, that that came to my mind is like the main challenge is the different challenge that you can find in the different regions, I think. Like in each region, you have different problems and different solutions. And the solutions are like, like a big diversity also. Um, I mean, the problems related with the open science hardware in particular. Um, I think that the gatherings that we already have are a big opportunity for came with different problems. So I think the gatherings is one of the big um, positive things that we already have. Another thing is the council, of course, but I think like the mo like the main strong is to be able to address um, to address all those challenges and I think that's that make the group like that make like the group a strong group because we can be able to add to abort to to work with different kind of problems so we can think together and we have a lot of people thinking in different ways like different kind of thinkings thinking about the same thing so I think that's a big um opportunity about that challenge that you can find. Thank you, Lara. Um, Ibuka, I can't see you on the screen, so I just wanted to give you an opportunity if you wanted to answer as well. Okay. Um, let me let me also state one of the challenges I observed um, in the Gosh community, and um, the challenge I observed is that um, most times, because I see a lot of the post things on. The community i see different projects by individuals okay and um i think it would be a lot better if we have um this projects in a collective manner you understand what i'm saying like if we can work together on several projects rather than having them as individual projects i think um it's going to help a lot um uh, you know in the community thank you very much Thank you, Ibuka. All right, I wanna open it back up to the community. Do the Gosh community members have any other questions they would like to ask candidates?
Harold? I can't hear you, unfortunately, Harold. No, I'm picking up on background noise or, or static, but not. Yeah, I think the microphone. No. No, I still can't hear you. Sorry, Harold. Sounds like maybe it's a wire connection problem, physical. Nope, no luck. Wait, I can hear something now. Try it now without picking up the mic. I think it might be disconnected at the. Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. Oh, I wanted to ask Lara if she could clarify what she meant by territory in 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 her um in in her uh, candidate statement. Uh, I wasn't quite sure what she what she meant. So that's my question. Thank you. Great. I'm sorry. I didn't pick up the exact thing you needed to clarify, Harold. Could you say that again? Um, when Lara, when you talk about territory in your in your candidate statement, um, what did you? Uh, I I didn't understand what you meant. So if you could please cl clarify that, I'd appreciate it. Thank you. Awesome. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sorry, that's a bad translation. I think. <laughs> um, with the territory, I mean in Spanish is territorio, and that means. Um, the place where community lives and the place where that community make their own activities. For example, um, I live in Buenos Aires and that will be my territory, my place where I can develop, I work, I live, I have fun, I have different activities. So that will be territory. Thank you, Lara. Um, yep. I have a question in the chat from Liz. Uh, first of all, Liz says, great to hear these responses. Um, could the candidates please share an experience of listening to their previous communities and what surprising breakthroughs happened? Uh, many different types of people reach new previously unknown solutions together. I don't, Liz, I don't think I understood the end of your statement. I might have uh, read that aloud incorrectly, but I think I understand the question of just explaining an experience of when you listen to your pre previous communities and what sort of breakthroughs happened. Sorry, these little alarms keep going off all the time. Would anyone like to answer that? Yorgo? Yeah, so maybe I can quickly reflect on how we did things in iGEM. So within our community last year, we had uh, different groups working on different topics, open science and accessibility, science communication, women in STEM, et cetera. And we've noticed that at some point, these groups were siloed and there is not much collaboration happening between them. So what we did this year is we completely changed the structure as in, instead of being a group based, based it's now project based. So we have more projects happening. There's more flexibility for members to join multiple projects. That kind of increased the amount of collaborations. It reduced the duplication of resources and it reinforced us as a community to produce like more valuable resources and to understand uh, what kind of challenges we face and how we can overcome them together instead of being in silos uh, working separately. So, yeah, that's uh, that's about it. Thank you, Yorgo. Would any other candidates like to address Liz's question? Lara? Um, I, well, last year to Panama, I brought with me the work that uh, our group have been done in Delta of Paraná in Buenos Aires uh, with a cooperative that works with a native plant from that place. Um, and I think that the, the most interesting things is the, the di dialogue of knowledges, of different kinds of knowledges that you can have when you talk with the people of your community. Um, and in that way you can like also avoid uh, that problem with different views, but also you can 
see that people may may have the answer of your of the thing that you are already asking somebody can already have because he lives there and knows the solution and knows how that can be work thank you lara any other candidates like to respond sad um I mean, I see, I see lots of examples where this tends to happen, um, where you just ask the question and it's what, like what, what Lara also mentioned, the communities and the spaces that uh, we tend to operate in respond to our uh, neighborhoods or localities in which, which they exist. Um, and just asking the question, listening to the people around uh, makes a huge difference. And um, in my experience, um from a tech background uh it's a pretty old example now but if you think about these tech hackathons that happen um you try and get young people to take on community problems and develop a tech solution they tend to get lost in the tech and they start throwing things in there just because they're familiar with um how to build it and they don't stop to think whether or not it's really needed or it's really appropriate or if it's actually causing more problems than it's solving um, and to be fair, it, it's less common now than it was before, uh, but I've started to notice with all this machine learning and AI stuff, we get very excited about them and we seem to be falling into the same trap again. Um, but yeah, just putting the user back into the center of things, asking whether or not they're able to use this technology before using the technology, um, I found is a helpful way of dealing with things like this. Thank you, Saad. Um, Abuka, I didn't know if you wanted to answer as well. I can't see on the camera, so I wanted to check. No, I'm okay. Actually, this is my first community, so no. Thank you. Fantastic. No worries. Mm -hmm. um, cool. Any other questions from community members? Pen? I'll go Pen then Harold. Uh, I'll ask one. So um, something that really moved me was going to um, the in-person GOSH gathering in Panama uh, in October of 2022. Um, and it was great to see uh, some of you in person as well. Uh, I'm curious about, you know, if... Uh, uh, what your thoughts are on how you like to make the next uh, in-person gathering happen, if you think it should happen. Um, and if you would like it to happen, you know, what are your, some, some of your specific thoughts on how we can, you know, bring it into fruition, um, you know, or maybe, you know, how can we fundraise to make it happen? It doesn't have to be fundraising specifically, but, you know, your thoughts generally on how to make the next gathering happen. Over. Thank you, Penn. Any candidates that would like to answer Penn's question? I saw Saad, and then I'll go Yorgo. Sorry, I tend to ramble a lot. So uh, thank you, Brie, for keeping me a time check. Um, the um, uh, recent uh, Fab Fest event uh, that brings together Fab Labs from around the world uh, was a very interesting example, I feel, um, of how to do a hybrid event. Um, this happened a couple of weeks ago in Bhutan, uh, which is a unique situation where the country is like right at the end of a supply chain um, and is surrounded by mountains. Um, and so Bhutan faces a number of unique challenges in terms of fabrication, um, but the people who participated and the organizations that brought themselves to be a part of that uh, event um, had some very interesting ways of doing hybrid events, hybrid participation. One in particular, um, I can't remember the name of the organization, but it was a German fab lab uh, that uh, engaged participants in Bhutan to control um, a, a pipetting bot uh, in uh, Stanford, I think it was 
in a lab in Germany, maybe. I'm not entirely sure. Confusing two different workshops. I tried to attend as many as I could. Um, and the participants had a, uh, an opportunity to interact with a physical um, lab device that was located in a different uh, space while being in a different country. And they demonstrated that it was possible to do in a workshop environment. So I think more examples like that would be really nice to explore. Thank you, Saad. Any other responses from candidates? Yorgo. Uh, yeah, so one interesting format that is now, it's not emerging, but it's happening a lot nowadays is having side events to to like one main big event. So I, I'm reflecting a lot on item because I, I really like the exam. Uh, there, so we basically do the, the jamboree by the end of the year, which is like when all the teams come in to demonstrate what they did in synthetic biology. But at the same time, we have side events happening. So we have a responsibility conference happening that thinks about how to impl responsibly implement synthetic biology. And the way I think it for GOSH is it can be this other side event that is focused on open science accessibility. And the unique environment is that you can wander around and look at the different projects that are happening using SynBio and open science. And you can come back to the side event and discuss and deliberate on these projects that are actually being implemented in the, the real world. So that's one interesting format that uh, Gosh could adopt. And yeah, so. Thank you, Yorgo. Um, any other candidates? Lara. Um, yes, I think that I first will go to the notes of the last year <laughs> when we finish the, the gathering and we start to say like what we will improve in the next gatherings. And I remember there were some 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 ideas there. Um, and then I think like meet the meeting person. I, I, I'm a person that I like to meet people like and feel the energy. I know that sometimes that can be a problem because not everybody can go there because of the work so many things. Um, but I would like the next gathering to be more uh, like to like the ideas and the roadmap that we can work there it will be more like representative of the different problems about a, of the different regions. Because I think it's good to have like a work group there with global, global community. But I also think that it's good for us to have like a, like a map of different problems of the open science in the different regions, for example. Um, I don't know, I imagine like the, the roadmap what we did we can make that, but in a smaller scale, for example. And maybe in that way, we can we don't have to be there like too much time. We can be like a smaller amount of time because we already work in, with our ration, but that will be necessary to have ration meetings. So, well, maybe it's more work, I don't know. <laughs> Thank you, Laura. Uh, any other candidates that would like to answer this? Ibuka. Okay, um, thank you very much. Um, what I just want to say is more like, um, I want to give an idea and also a proposal because um, from the last GOSH, um, GOSH gathering workshop we had, I think last month or so, um, I had Ibuka, I think you have frozen for me. Has Ibuka frozen for others? Um, find. Can you hear me? Oh, yes, I can hear you now. Um, the last thing I heard you say was when you were at the last gathering workshop. So if you don't mind starting oh. from there and continuing. Oh, okay, okay, okay. What I was saying is um, from the last GOSH gathering workshop we had, um, I discovered we spent a lot on um, getting a venue for the GOSH gathering. So what I'm suggesting now is if we can um, host the upcoming one or any other one in a location where is um you know conducive and then also free that would go a long way in helping you know the 
GOSH community, and then we can channel that bond to you know various other things that we need. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ibuka. All right, let me see. I think we've got a couple questions that have been coming into the chat. Um, Liz, I think you had a question earlier that I caught. Yes, Liz, I saw you had one at 11.35 p.m., but I know Harold raised his hand before that. So I'm going to have Harold go, and then Liz, I'll go to your question that was a little bit earlier. Um, yeah, I also realized I said 11.35 p.m., my time. Sorry to confuse everyone, just reading the chat. But yeah, Harold, if you want to uh, do your question. Uh, thanks. Um, it's a real quick question for Ibuka. Uh, you mentioned that you have a physics background. Can you give me an example? Of, well, can you can you tell me how it is that you you made the switch from physics to uh, um, podcasting and being a community manager? And what was your what your previous life as a physicist like? That's all I have. Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much, um, Mr. Harold. And it's it's really been amazing working as a physicist, and I still work as a physicist. I even taught physics for, I think, um, a year or two in a high school. But then um, my line is still in the line of physics, but then podcasting as a tech aspect is what I like to do. It's not that I totally left the world of physics, right? Because physics is what applies to our everyday lives. So um, I still do and enjoy physics. I'm just doing um, podcasting as um, what I do on the side and more like a hobby, even though I still uh, you know, earn from it. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ibuka. I want to go to Liz's question from earlier in the chat. Liz asked if you can share an example of when you learned something new and then changed your mind. Anyone, from, any of the candidates like to answer Liz's question? Anyone that would like to answer? Laura, I'm not sure if you're trying to answer, but you're muted. <laughs> okay, good. I'm green, I would love. <laughs> okay, no, you're perfectly fine. Um, the question, just one more time, was sharing an example of when you learned something new and then changed your mind. Sorry, j just to clarify, change, change your mind as in about what you've, already known or about what you've learned just maybe i didn't get the um the question yeah that liz, last part was somewhat confusing as well yeah <laughs> yeah of course liz would you mind clarifying in the chat or unmuting and clarifying your question hey hey it's so nice to hear everybody this morning um this is liz um sorry for my confusing question what I'm interested in is understanding how the candidates are equipped to do the amount of learning that's going to happen when you step into the seat representing a global community who you do not yet know everybody in. I'd love to hear an example of when you learned something new and I'm not you could take it from a scientific and technical point that would be, you know, traditional and you're part of your education and you changed your mind about theory. But I'd like to hear something more subjective. When you changed your mental model of other people, of groups, about what was right, about a value judgment. Thank you. Thank you, Liz. Saad. The powerful question, Liz. Um, there's one, I mean, there's several occasions uh, where I've had to sort of st step back and think, hang on a second, why are we doing this uh, in the first place? Um, but the one that sticks uh, with me constantly and comes up um, often is, because uh, I work with persons with disabilities um, and uh, assistive devices, um, benefit from digital fabrication. Uh, you can make custom-made 
devices. Uh, but when you work with persons with disabilities, it the um, social cultural aspects always uh, come up um, a lot. And I've noticed that in the uh, non-Asian context, there's a distinct difference in the dynamic. Uh, for example, if you talk to somebody, and this is just an example, uh, somebody in a wheelchair, if you talk to somebody in a wheelchair and say, okay, fine, you know, uh, it says something that I can 3D print for you that will help you use your, 3D, your wheelchair, uh, make it more comfortable. Uh, if you speak directly to the individual in the wheelchair, um, you don't get a meaningful response uh, as compared to when you speak to the caregiver. And if you involve the caregiver in the conversation, the nature of the expression, the way the problems are being expressed is completely different from if the caregiver was not in the room. Uh, and I've noticed a distinct difference between uh, non-Asians and Asians in this. Uh, the person in the wheelchair gets very upset if I speak to the caregiver and not the person in the wheelchair. They say, look, talk to me. I'm sitting, I'm the one who you're trying to help, so talk to me. But uh, that tends to be in my experience in Europe uh, or with Europeans. Um, but in Asia, the dynamic is very different. It's like, you should talk to my caregiver or why don't you? we bring her into the conversation? Um, so this is something that um, I came as a bit of a surprise and it's something that I carry with me uh, almost every day. Thank you, Saad. All right, would anyone else like to answer Liz's question? Mara? I'm trying to find the words in English. <laughs> so oh. I'm I'm going and coming back from the translate. Um for me, it has been like a difference when I learn to work in groups. Like I realized that I like the work group and I like to make group decisions and on and not individual decisions. That, that for me was like, um, like knowing that I prefer to work in that way, for me, it has been like, okay, I prefer to work this way. So I will try to improve that way of work. And last year in the Rigos Mendoza was a very good point. Like we were developing and working in making things, but the, we were we were able to see the difference when we work alone and when we work together. Um, and I know that everybody has its own background, so we are going to make decisions uh, knowing uh, because of our background, but we are always we also are going to 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 have new knowledge and have new views because of other people. So I think be able to to be like, you know, the membrana, like in the biology, when you have the, the cell the, that can go some things, but other can go like in that way, like let the knowledge and things, background of other people go into our mind and our body, but not like to all everything there work together, something like that. <laughs> Thank you, Lara. Any other responses to Liz's question? All right. I do not think we have any more responses to that. Um, I do want to be mindful of the time. We have a little bit less than 10 minutes. Um, I know we did have one more question from Liz, uh, but I think out of respect for time, I think we'll probably do some closing remarks and close out for the day with a couple minutes to spare. I know I have to leave right on the dot, so I would hate to start a question and not give everyone the full time to respond. Um, Liz, I would like to invite you to respond to the candidates thread on the forum with your questions. I know Harold has posed a question there as well. Um, so if you'd like to get feedback from candidates, I definitely encourage you to share your question there. 
Um, but yes, I did want to just close out with a couple remaining comments. First of all, thank you to the community members for joining and hearing from the candidates today. And also thank you to the candidates for taking the time out of your day to share your statements and let us know a little bit more about yourselves. Uh, it's always great to be in a room together with the GOSH community, so I enjoy having these meetings. Um, but yeah, also thank you for dealing with my timer that has a mind of its own and would just randomly go off. I Deeply apologize if that cut anyone off. I tried really hard to avoid that from happening, but it might've happened a few times, so thank you. Um, yeah, I think the only remaining things for me is a couple of housekeeping items. Let me make sure I copy these links correctly. All right. Um, so yeah, you can learn more about the candidates that are running for election uh, by viewing their candidate statements on the GOSH forum. Um, and you can respond to their forum posts as well if you have individual questions for them. Um, I do encourage you to register to vote if you haven't registered yet. Um, your vote is super important in shaping the future of the GOSH community. And I'm gonna share a link with you all in the chat now. Yep, sent. So the first link there is the registration link. And then if you need to find out more about the election, I invite you to take a look at our landing page on the GOSH website, which lists candidates, uh, more information on the timeline of the election and everything like that. Uh, but yeah, I think with that, we can go ahead and wrap up today. I do want to note that registration will close on August 28th, uh, so be sure to register before then. Uh, but yeah, aside from that, that is all for today. I will share this back on YouTube and on the forum with the GOSH community, and I appreciate seeing you all as always. So yeah, thank you everyone for joining.